Hello, hello, what's going on? I'm back at it in the five minute pool. Um, today, um, I'm just going to do without music today. I've uh, just, I just sort of want to chill, focus a little bit more on the moves. Um, I actually uh, just got home not too long ago and, um, well, I've been jamming out on the train and would listen to music and stuff, so I just want to chill and play some chess. So let's get right to it. Uh, five minute pool. Um, I put my 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 seek in, so um, we'll uh, we'll see uh, who comes out. Um, and in the meantime, what a weekend! Um, uh, There's just been so many things going on in the world. Um, I'm not going to even talk about any of those things, but I think you guys know what I'm talking about. Um, it's just it, it's it's really tough. It's 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 hard out there right now. America's doing some things. Um, but, uh, I'll leave it at that. Uh, my weekend personally was actually su surprisingly lukewarm. I mean, I, I did a little bit of a pregame on Friday, um, wound up not really doing anything really fun. Um, <laughs> uh, and then Saturday, uh, was also sort of, uh, lukewarm. So, um, I don't know, now that I'm working full time, I just, I feel like the, the days have to be really, um, or the time, my free time has to be really, really well used. Because it's like, what's the point of going to work, then sleeping, and then waking up, and then doing up all doing it all over again? I feel like that sort of cyclical monotony uh, is just, I don't know, it just doesn't jive with me. So, um, okay, I'm, I guess I'm just going to have to keep telling you about my life story because the, there's still no one in the queue. That's amazing. Um, or no one that is... I mean, ICC normally doesn't take this long to pair me. Um, what else has happened? Okay, well, in chess, in the chess world, okay, we got a pairing. But in the chess world, um, Wesley So uh, won Tata Steel. Congratulations to him. I still think Carlson's the best player in the world, though. All right, D4. I'm going to go E6. Um, and it's a flexible move. Knight F3, Knight F6. I, could, the reason I like to play E6 sometimes is that you can you have this idea of maybe playing the Dutch. You could do other things as well. You can play the Stonewall Dutch, but this is Bishop B4. This is the Bogo, and I'm going to take on D2. It's a relatively modest system, uh, but Knight takes D2, I think, is a slight mistake. And the reason for that is the Knight is just less active on D2 than it would be on C3. So I, actually, I don't support this uh, this uh, foray uh, that um, to D2, but this is also a line. C6, uh, castles. Knight bd7, and white does have a slight, slight space advantage, um, and black typically plays bishop b7, rook c8, and really plays like this. It's very important here, I think, that I actually don't play um, d takes e4, and the reason for that is if I play d takes e4, and then he takes the knight, and then takes the queen, my c6 pawn is hanging, and white just has really good central control of my pawn breaks. So I think I'm actually supposed to allow black to go e5. So I'm just going to go bishop b7. And black can, and I think a white can, I think should play e5. But um, black does have some counterplay because once the once white's white's once white's pawn in the center are fixed, I can uh, plan for the pawn break c5. So I think that's if e5 is played, I'll play knight e8 and then entertain the c5 break. All right, so that's what's happening. E5, knight e8. And note, knight g5 here would be a very strong move if my queen was not controlling that square because it would threaten mate. And I really don't want to weaken any more dark squares around my camp. C5 is a very interesting move. I was considering this, and the idea is just to get sort of this really nice dark square, uh, this really nice clamp on both sides of the board against my pieces. Um, I wonder if I just underestimated it. Um... Because if, if I take on c5, then white's knight gets the d4 square, which I really don't want to allow. Uh, but I need to get some counterplay somewhere, and I think that's what I'm going to have to do. So I'm going to have to give him the d4 square. I'm going to play d b takes c5, and now I'm going to play f6. And the idea is that my idea is that maybe uh, by playing f6, I might have some counterplay with e5 because I can't allow white to just squeeze me and snuff me out. Rook e1 is a very interesting move. Uh, Sort of a threatening. He takes f6 actually, and uh, well, this is not all roses here. Um, hmm. 
I'm going to go Queen E7, which attack protects the E6 pawn, but also threatens. Um, uh, it will also attack C5 and uh, see what his response is. But I think White is White might be a little bit better if, if B4 here. I think I'll I'll have to play A5, and then um, I just it feels to me like White is better. But I'm gonna I'm gonna try and continue to undermine uh, the center. So now A5 is. Uh, is just attacking b4, and if he goes a3, then at least I trade a pair of rooks and maybe take on e5, but, okay, this is what I wanted, e takes f6, now I'll go knight takes f6, which protects the h7 pawn, uh, against any mates, um, and also now, if I can just get in this e5 move, and play e5, e4, I think I'd be in decent shape. Okay, so... Hmm. So I think this is the, the, the tension on the queen side's positive pawn tension for me because I can actually choose to take on uh, b4 when I feel like, and I think I need to start by playing e5. Um, that being said, if I take on b4 and then and then take on a1 and then play e5, um, there isn't this sort of lagging uh, lagging pressure on my. Uh, on the E line, because I'm afraid if he goes E5, there's Knight takes E5. That's what's worrying me, actually. Hmm. I'm gonna go E5. The reason I I, I had I was just debating whether I should take on B4 and then A1 and then play E5 or play E5 right away. And I was a little bit worried about that if I took everything and then played e5, he might have rook a7 at the end. And so, and annoying my bishop on b7, if I, my bishop moves, then my knight on d7 is pinned to the queen. And yeah, I wasn't a big fan of that. Queen z3 is, a, is attacking my e4 pawn, but I sort of am not uh, mad about this, because now I can go e4. And at least now I have uh, my pawn advanced as far as I would like it to be. Um... Okay. All right. So now I sh the question is: Do I go knight g4 or not? Or do I go queen e5? Or what do I what do I do? That's the question. So I think knight g4 looks like the logical move. But I'm gonna play a takes b4 first. And the idea is just to uh, to trade these pair of rooks because now the f3 has a lot less sting if the rook has to leave the e-file. And yeah, this is my idea. And now I'm getting into that that place I like to uh, I don't like too much called time trouble because I'm talking a little bit too much. So I'm gonna make some of these moves and then maybe have a little chat after the game because um, now I need to play largely on instinct and it's uh, a little bit tricky when you're in the time trouble to play purely on instinct but for now i'm attacking f2 okay f3 i'll take that okay Threatening 94, by the way. And this uh, this 1900 is playing remarkably strong. Um, pretty good. Um, definitely playing above his level. Mm-hmm. And 94 is actually pretty strong, because if the queen moves away from the e3 square, I, I might be threatening queen e3 check. I have to stop this pin. It was killing me, this pin. 
Um, Oh man, that's a check. Oh, I didn't see that. I, I blundered that check. Yeah, this is completely losing, folks, because queen f5 check just, I mean, he's just up a queen. Uh... But he's still thinking, and he's not playing what I would consider to be the, the logical move. So I'm going to play it out. Uh, the That's amazing. Yeah, I'm going to resign. Uh, the man in blue played really well, I would say. Um, uh, he played pretty positionally. Um, he put he definitely put the squeeze job on me um, with this move. After b6, e4, bishop e7, e5, knight e8, c5. That's a really strong move, clamping down on my, um, on my queen side. Um, and... Uh, yeah, it was pretty clean. I thought that I might be able to get some counterplay with f6, um, and then b4, and then a5. Um, but uh, but the e5, he, even after I get e5 and e4, he still has really con good control of the dark squares. And so it's a, it's the question is, do I have pressure on f2 or I don't? And uh, I thought I might have a little bit of pressure on f2 after this trade in knight g4, but Evidently, uh, maybe I didn't because after f3, um, you just sort of immediately nullified that pressure. And now the white rook has domination of the a-file, and my bishop on b7 is pretty dead. So um, I'm actually curious what the engine would say. because um, it. Uh, so I'm just going to start this. So yeah, it's, it's, it's slightly better for white. Um, and after rook a7, knight e4, I, was, I equalized. Or, you know, I didn't equalize. It's still better for white after queen g3. Um, yeah, and then he, he played he played a lot of really, really good moves. So, kudos to him. Um, but definitely, uh, not that was not 1900 level strength, uh, I don't think. So, anyways, on to the next. Sometimes I, I'm playing these really solid openings because I want to sort of get into a game, you know, and not, and, you know, sort of explain ideas, but it might be that the sharp openings are better for blitz simply because uh, they put more pressure on your opponent early, and it's not great if I fall into time trouble and stuff. All right, so e4, c5, I'm going to play a sharper version, Sicilian, d6, knight of, knight of 3, d6, and uh, if he plays d4, um, I have my choice of Sicilians uh, to think about playing, but his thought process here makes me, his long thought process here in move 3 makes me think he's probably not going to play, um, not going to play d4. Um, and in that case, I would guess bishop b5 or knight c3. Uh, it's always weird when people think, oh, okay, so maybe he's, he's, so he's willing to play as Sicilian. Knight takes d4, knight f6, knight c3. And there are many Sicilians. g6 would be the Bragg, and e6 is the... Shevenengen, a6 is the Nardorf, knight c6 is the classical. I'm going to go for a Nardorf. Um, that one is the, is, has a decent reputation. Bishop b3, e5. I'm going to go for a true Nardorf. Uh, if, if I chose uh, e6, it would have Shevenengen. And knight b3, bishop b6. And this is sort of the best, the most classical Nardorf move order. You go bishop b6 to go cover the d5 square immediately. And then f3. Um, 
uh, bishop e7, um, and then typically queen d2 is played here, yep, and then I'm going to castle. Knight bd7 is also a main move, but I'm going to castle. Uh, the, the point is now, if g4 is a mistake because it allows d5. Okay, so knight d5 I didn't expect. Knight d5 I did not expect. I don't think it's that great here because now I actually can take on d5 and with the knight and keep my bishop and go bishop f5. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take on d5 and then ed5 is going to be played. But now I have bishop f5 and I think black should be okay here. Alright, bishop e2 is a move. It definitely is a move. And I'm just going to go knight bd7, continue the development. Um, but this is not, this is a little bit incorrect in my opinion uh, to play the nard off this way because you're essentially. Not ca you're castling kingside now. Um, I'm gonna go rook c8 and attacking c2. You're castling kingside, but you played this move f3 and bishop e2, which are not really in the spirit of the white side of the knight of positions. Normally, if you go f3 in this sort of English attack style, you would go for something a little bit spicier. So c4, uh, that is also a move. Um, these are all moves. Um, I think the idea is, well, I don't know what the idea is. Um, but I, I don't mind my position at all. So I'm going to go bishop g6, I think. It's a decent move. Um, and here, and so basically we have white as a queenside majority and black has a kingside majority. Um, and it's a question of whose majority is stronger. Knight a5 is an interesting move because if I go b6, knight c6 is devastating. So I go queen c7 to protect the b7 pawn. And it's, again, this question of whose majority is better. It looks so far like white's majority is better because I really underestimated the merits of this b4, 9a5 maneuver. Um, but I'm not without my own counterplay, and I need to get that started somehow. So, hmm. What to do? The 9a5 is really annoying me. I'm going to go for a little bit of a weird plan. I'm going to go uh, bishop d8. And my idea is going to be to play queen b8 next and attack the a5 knight. But maybe it's a little bit telegraphed. Maybe I should have started with queen b8 first. Because now I can go knight b3 back and... Uh, it was a little bit of a telegraphed maneuver. Okay, so queen b8. So I got this in. This is my idea. And now the knight goes back. That makes sense. And uh, now I'm going to go b6 because um, it looks really... c5 looks really problematic. Unfortunately, b6 weakens the a6 pawn, so he's probably going to go c5 anyway. This I, this I missed uh, talking and not thinking. Um, c5 here is very strong. He's going to go c5 here. That's what he's thinking about. And I missed it. If he goes c5, I'm going to have to go b5 to cover the a6 pawn. Yeah. I missed that move. And uh, it's, it's really strong because now my, my... I mean, this pawn is now can go to c6. And it's protected past pawn that far advanced is really, really great. He can also keep the tension and throw in a move like a4, which is interesting and undermines my chain on b5. Um, but, I, again, I'm not totally without counterplay, but this is looking bad. This is looking bad. Um, okay, rook f, rook c3, just trying to increase the pressure makes a lot of sense. Um... I'm going to go bishop c7 uh, to try and defend the d6 pawn this way. And yeah, he now he's threatening all these nasty things. I'm going to go rook d8, rook c d8, move my rook off the file. And this is bad. I just really, really bad. But I'm just going to try and hold up this blockade and sort of distract. And note note that my, my kingside counterplay, whatever that was supposed to be with my kingside majority, has not been utilized. And so that's why white is so much better here, because I, ha I haven't gotten anything going with my, my kingside pawn majority. 
So it's a real issue um, that, that, that just nothing has gotten going yet. Um, so rook, a, rook a1, look at this, very nice move, Ope, trying to open another flank. I'm going to go knight, oh, I, I can't even go knight f6. Yeah, I'm going to go knight f6. And the idea is I'm threatening to play uh, d takes d5 and attack the uh, d5 pawn. And yes, yeah, c6, very clever, cl shutting it down, saying no, you cannot have any counterplay whatsoever. Oi. Now, if there's only a way I can attack the d5 pawn, that would be nice. I have no counterplay. He's just going to try and blast me open with this, um, this a4 move. What to do? I have I have no I have absolutely no counterplay. All right, so I'm gonna try some rogue mission, trying to massage the flank squares a little bit. Bishop a7 here just uh, is pretty pretty decent. Well, it does allow bishop b6 check, but again, this b this b pawn is a goner. Well, this at least allows bishop b6 check, so I can trade the bishops. That maybe was a tiny mistake. And now h3 is a very strong move, just sort of weakening, trying to weaken black's kingside pawns. Um, so now, if he goes g3, I have maybe queen f2 and. I got a little counterplay now. I think he made a... He, it was a critical mistake, this bishop a7. He missed bishop b6 check, and that's why he's a little bit under pressure now. All right, g4 holds on, but now I'm going to go rook a8, try to commandeer the a file. Uh, knight a7 boldly blocks it. And now... I'm going to go e4, actually. It's really imperative that I try to sort of break something open here. Huh. I actually think black is all right now. And now this is really nasty because of knight e4. Okay, I saw that. Now I'm going to go knight g5, which uh, leaves the queen vulnerable and also threatens knight takes f3. So I'm going to take here. And then take on f3, and if rook takes f3, I have bishop e4, but he didn't do that. He did something else. Um, but this just allows me to move my knight away. So where do I put it? Where do I put it? Put it I put it on g5. And now I'm just threatening bishop e4, among other things. And now I'm attacking the b7 pawn, so now I, I, so now I can trade everything. Um, and yeah, I've just got a completely winning position here. It's playing really fast, which is annoying. And he resigned, and he lost on time. Wow, okay, so, uh, very interesting game. Uh, I think the key takeaway, if I could look at uh, the previous, at the at the opening, was that uh, this is the Sicilian Nardorf, and um, in this position, coming up in a moment, um, Queen D2... Castles normally castles here is played because the white threat the black threat is d5, 
Um, if you play a move like g4 here, it's actually a mistake because after d5, black is able to break, get the pawn break in the middle, and g5 attacking the black knight fails to d4. So, which is a fork on the bishop on e3 and the knight on c3. So, black, white normally castles queenside here. Knight d5 is an interesting move. I haven't seen it that much, but okay, I'm not a crazy hardcore Nardorf, Nardorf guy. So maybe that's why. But the point is, is that I don't like this move because after knight takes d5, e takes d5, bishop f5, uh, the two bishops are preserved, and usually this queenside majority is very difficult to mobilize. Um, he mobilized it well in this game, but it's usually tricky to mobilize. And the other thing is uh, that that's we a little bit weird about this is you played these queen these uh, uh, excuse me white played these um, these English attack moves with queen d2 and f3. And I don't think they mix necessarily. Now, queen d2 is actually a useful move here because it stops the exchange of the dark squared bishops with bishop g5. But f3, and it does connect the rooks because uh, white does eventually go kingside. But f3, I absolutely don't think mixes it. The white's intention is actually to go kingside. So after bishop e2, knight, knight d7, I thought I had a, a really decent knight off type position. Um, but maybe I should have explored another option because... This knight a5 move became a very, very annoying move because it allowed the b-pawn to be cleared for the way to push um, and to get the queenside pawn majority going. And it also tied me to defense the b7-pawn. Because if you look in a couple moves, after knight a5, the b, uh, you really, b6 is just not a move you can afford to make because knight c6 and then knight is just a monster on the c6 square. Uh, so it's really not b6 is not a move you can afford to make here. And again, if I can, if the knight gets to stay on a5 and the queenside pawn majority starts rolling, I did something wrong. So definitely something to think about. Uh, and really, the critical position was after uh, bishop e2 here. Um, I should have taken the knight a5 plan a bit more seriously. Um, maybe I should have explored playing a5, just taking control of the square. Um, I was a little bit reluctant to do that because I didn't want to fix my queenside pawn structure. But in return, I maybe fixed the knight, and that might be just as, as valuable. So maybe playing pawn a5 here was the key move, and then I can continue my development. Because a few moves later, this knight a5 was a real problem, and we can already see here that white is clearly in the driver's seat. Fortunately, I won the game, but always something to improve upon. All right, next. So, um, so those are two tough games, I must say, uh, <laughs> to start out with. Um, the 1900 that, uh, that played a really, really impressive uh, squeeze game, and now this game, and then Nardoff was a, a bit of, I was a bit under pressure, or more than a bit under pressure. Um, so impressive. Um, he really, in that past game, just missed bishop b6 check, which turned the tables a little bit. Um, hmm. What else? So I, I was uh, I was talking a little bit about sort of Tata Steele and the So Carlson thing. So is a great player, no doubt about it. It's gotten a lot better. I still think Carlson's the best player in the world. I think So is a little bit too computer heavy in some in some cases and isn't so great at playing on his own. I think that's his, one of his problems. Um, there was um, he's a, he's also he's of course changed from from the time that uh, that it was really bad because there was a time I think it was like the U.S. Championship or the Six Hall Cup, one of those tournaments. We lost like three or four white games. Um, I think it was three. Uh, and you just can't do that if you want to be a top player. And so I remember he lost a King's Indian game in Nakamura. He lost a semi-Slav game to Sevian and um, Sam Sevian, the young grandmaster. And another person where he just lost a white game. And you just can't allow these like guys in black to pick you off. And I think the, the, when the computer, the computer fails him, like with his preparation, something sometimes bad things happen. Um, the other problem I feel uh, that he has is that um, he tends to draw out when he has a tournament lead. And what I mean by that is that he'll essentially play, he'll like be on a score plus two or plus three, which means like it's like over, it's like in golf they have like under par, in chess it's like over par. So if you're like plus two, it means you're like, you've like two, it's like you have. You have like a net score of two, uh, which is uh, pretty good in the super tournaments. Um, the issue is I've uh, I've seen him have plus two, plus three many times, and then 
especially the Singfeld Cup, it reminded me. Uh, and then he'll just draw the draw to conclude the tournament. Now this time that didn't actually happen because Napo uh played in a really weird way, and uh, evidently uh, so was he had a winning position very quickly. Um, but if you're you're not gonna you're not gonna win many tournaments if you're trying to just protect the lead at the end, um, particularly when Carlson's playing. So I just thought that was something that was uh, that he need to work on. But um, maybe I'm just a hater. I, I just I obviously I don't like draws, and I just don't think you could be really on the top for too long if that's your recipe uh, to just get a, get plus two or plus three score and then draw out. Anyways, back to this game. Um, White has a nice space advantage here, which is good. 94 is an interesting move because now Black is going to definitely go for some sort of weird-looking stonewall at f5. And the question is, do I take on e4 now or do I not? And I think I should take on e4 now, so I'm going to do that. And d takes e4 will be played, and then I'll play knight d2, attacking this pawn on e4. Sort of trying to, yeah, get out f5. Um, and the question is... Am I better here? Because the one issue is that this knight can come to d5, and it's a very good score piece on d5. And again, my king is going king side, but it doesn't feel like it's so welcome on that side right now. So I have to figure this out. White looks like... Black, black looks really like doing like he's doing well, so... I'm trying to figure out what is my, what do I have to do? I'm going to play g3 first, just prophylactic covering the f4 square, because it looked like f4 might be a move on the cards. e5, very, very interesting. I didn't, I didn't expect this at all, because it didn't make sense to me that you'd open up the bishops. Um, I don't get that. I'm going to go queen b3 check. King will slide to h8. And then I'm wondering if I just castle queenside here. I think I do, actually. Um, it looks weird, like, castling queenside in a position like this, but I really like the, the, the rook lined up against this queen, and I, don't th I think my king is actually pretty safe. And these bishops, I think, can start to rake in this type of position. Oh, I thought they did. So I'm going to play... Ah, uh, bishop takes was my idea. I'm gonna I'm gonna keep up with bishop takes. Uh, I'm sort of re already regretting whether maybe I shouldn't have castled queenside. But uh, okay, queen c3 I think is decent, protecting the c5 pawn and also eyeing g7. And in the a long term, if I can talk about the long term in this position, I'd love to play h4, h5, h6. Um, I thought that my yeah okay, so that bishop e5 makes a lot of sense. Uh, pressure pressuring the the bishop and doing some good things. Um, hmm. I'm gonna play bishop takes d7. That's a little bit of a weird move to make, but I think I think it's pretty interesting. The idea is that after e takes and then bishop takes seven, knight c4. And I'm wondering if, okay, my king looks really weak where it is, but I'm about to play knight b6. We'll have the benefit of controlling the c file, uh, the c8 square. And then that coupled with the fact that uh, my pawns might start rolling, I might actually have something going. So I'm going to go knight b6 first to hit the, um, hit the a8 rook. The reason I didn't play d5 is because I thought he might be able to sacrifice the piece by playing queen takes c5. So I just cut out that option. And now after knight b6, uh, the, my queen side looks fairly covered, and I have this d5 idea. So now I can go d5, hitting this uh, this bishop. And uh, yeah, and then I'm going to go d6, um, just pushing that pawn further. Um, and okay, his queen aligned up against the f this f7 square against this square looks really dangerous, but he has no checks because my queen controls the a1 square and the a3 square, so I'm going to play h4 now, uh, trying to create a lever, uh, a pawn lever, uh, on the queen side. There are more patient moves, but I think h4, h5 might be an idea, and 
Um, it's interesting. And F4, okay, an idea, but it doesn't really scare me that much because, why doesn't it scare me much? Because of G4. And I'm just going to sort of, again, keep my queen on C3 and everything sort of covered. Okay, E3 is a little bit interesting. Um, I don't see any threat. I'm going to go h5, which has the idea of playing h6. It's very important my queen doesn't get distracted from the c3 squares. So that's why I ignored that move. And now... What am I going to do now? No rook d5. Oh no, did I just allow queen takes d5? That's a really strong move, actually. Uh oh. I don't know, I have h6. Maybe it isn't. Again, I'm talking and getting into time trouble, so I'm just going to try and zip through now. But this is my idea. Now I'm going rook g4 if I can. Oh man, e1 queen. Shoot. Oh my god, bishop takes d5. Uh, yep, alright. Oh, I had a winning position there. Um, I'm sure of it because... I, I had the pawns under control, and my own pawn was being pushed. Um, so I'm going to step right... I'm gonna. Where did I think I was winning? I think I was winning... I think I was winning... Right after he didn't play... I thought I was winning right after F3, and I'm going to look. And what do you know? I'm totally wrong. I'm worse. Amazing how chess works sometimes. I thought that this pressure on the on this my queenside pawns coupled with this pressure on g7 was going to be incredible. But these pawns seem are actually sort of firmly blockaded, and he already has this protected pass pawn on e2, which is looked stronger. So I was wrong about that. And yeah, too much to handle in the time trouble. So, uh, yeah, good good for him. Um, a little bit sloppy on my part, though. I really did think I had a decent position in the opening, and I'm going to look at this a little bit. Uh, yeah, after c5 here, I thought I really had a decent position, because after bishop c7, bishop takes b5, white has a queenside pawn majority. Um, but it was really good... Uh, I'm sorry, white has a queen... Not a queenside pawn majority. White has a central pawn majority. Um with this extra, this really healthy pawn chain. So on c5, d4, e3. And uh, and the b7 pawn is a backward pawn. And so white has the better of the structure, but black did well to sort of muddy the waters by playing uh, knight e4 in a few moves. And after knight takes e4, d takes e4, white is still better, but at least after knight d2, black can secure the d5 square, which he did by playing f5. So... A little bit sloppy on my part, but um, again, these are blitz games. Okay, we got a Swedish guy now, making no sense. You know what makes no sense? Um, this guy lives in Sweden. It's six hours ahead in Sweden. And by my count, that means it's 3.47 a.m. Um, so what is he doing up? On ICC, that is making no sense. Um, 
Uh, but of course, I'm a hypocrite because I've done that several, several times. So uh, maybe it's uh, maybe it makes all the sense in the world. He's a chess player. Chess is a chess is like a drug, man. It's uh, it's 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 uh, it's a crazy addiction. All right, so I'm gonna play sharp, so there's no funny business. So this is the king's Indian, um, and I'm gonna go for the funny business. So knight f3, castles, bishop e2. I expect, yeah. And then I'm gonna go for the old variation with knight bd7 e5. It's a little less theoretical and a lot more tricky than the main lines that happen these days in the bayonet. And bishop g5 means he agrees with me because that's not a move you see every day in this line. Um, I'm gonna start with h6. And I, that reason, the idea is you just sort of call into question what uh, he's going to do with his bishop. And yeah, bishop e3 I sort of expected. Um, and I'm going to go e5 anyway. e5 is not what you should be doing here, but um, it's interesting. And now knight g4 hits the e3 bishop, and so the bishop will probably go to d2 now, and I'm going to go f5. And so this is sort of a weird position because, um, well, it just doesn't really happen like this very often. And, H3, I was wondering if I could go knight takes f2. That's what I was wondering. It's too tempting. My point is that knight takes f2, king takes, f takes e4, and then knight takes e4 and queen h4 check. That was what piqued my curiosity. Oh, it's so interesting. I gotta go for it. Queen h4 check, king e3. This looks super cool. And so basically king e3, my queen is hanging, right? So I have to go queen f4 check, right? And my point is that after king d3, I want to play, I want to win this knight somehow. So knight c5 check, he just takes it. So I want to go queen f5. And the point is I'm threatening knight c5. Um, I'm threatening knight c5 check, but he can play b4, which I did not calculate. But this king is in the middle, um, which usually gives cause to pause. The other point is that, actually, if he goes for b4, I might have this really interesting move, b5, which uh, undermines the c4 square. So I think I might... Okay, the sacrifice might not be correct, but it's so interesting, and I couldn't help myself. Um, and, okay, bishop b3 thwarts knight c5 check. Now I'm going to go b5, trying to undermine the light squares in the camp. And uh, it's an interesting move. I mean, this doesn't look entirely correct, but I just, I, again, I couldn't help myself. So... Oh my gosh. Okay, so I'm going to take on c4 first. Because he has to play b takes c4. And I think I can play knight f6 here. If the king is on e4, I can play bishop f5 mate. If the bishop is still on e3. Oh my gosh, this is crazy. So he's going to go knight d2. That's the only way to protect. Oh my god, this is inc insane. Does it work though? I'm a piece down, and I don't have time for these shenanigans. Oh my gosh. Man, if, if I was a good calculator, this would be such a nice position that it... Ugh. I, I'd have to plan instinct, and I... Ugh. His king is stuck in the middle, and I don't have the solution I want. I want to just... If my knight was on d7, I could play queen takes e4. Alright, I'm going to go knight f6, but... He's going to go knight d2. And then what? Oh 
Ugh, oh, this is so, so disheartening. I'm going to try and keep the pin because I don't see any mate. But uh, I'm sure there was something there. Oh, what a shame. What a shame. I want to sack the queen on e4 so bad, but I just have to play for compensation now because I didn't see anything. Now, now g5 keeps my queen on the diagonal, but it's definitely not the beautiful mating combination I was aspiring to create. Wow, that's so sad. Now the king is totally safe. Oh. I'm going to go for some tricks with bishop b5, but I don't think this works. You could just take it and go king d3. Oh, this is so sad. Oh, he's just gonna, he's doing what he's supposed to do, king d3. <sighs> I know I had something there. I know I had something there. Well, at least I get points from the peanut gallery for trying, right? Um, so, okay, so I'm down two pieces, and, and all his pieces are effectively blockading mine on the light square. So it's really, uh, it's not, I mean, it's just not what it need, where it needs to be. But, um, but again, he's, th he's taking a lot of time and, you know, time that usually, uh, is a decent sign. Okay. So D5, I'm just trying to sort of win a piece back. Playing Bishop takes A1 would have been a bad idea because my Bishop on G7 is actually my most active minor piece right now. Um, mm, okay. So Rook C, Rook C1 trying to get, uh, my, um. My c7 pawn. And I'm gonna go. I'm just gonna keep the pressure on e4. So now I'm actually threatening to play d takes e4. Um, and okay, I'm almost equal on time now. So if I shut up, maybe I could get something going here. And this is excellent, because this is actually way more than I could have helped for a few moves ago. Ooh, tough one again in time. Time trouble again. All these games are sort of interesting and just not ending up in my favor. Um, but that's one to look at. This is one to look at. So d4, knight of 6, c4, g6. Okay, so all this King's Indian stuff I hope you've seen before. 
Um, if you haven't seen it before, I might actually make opening videos at some point, um, and uh, yeah, then you will have seen it. Bishop g5 is not the normal move here. Normally they castle, um, but it's another idea to combine e2 and, and bishop to g5. I don't remember what the line is called, but it's a little bit unusual. Typically when the bishop goes to g5, um, black uh, doesn't actually play e5 because the bishop is exerting su like su such pressure on the h4 d8 diagonal that um, that doesn't really make sense to push e5. And so, but I played h6 first. And, and then when the bishop went back to e3, I thought, okay, maybe I could play e5 now. After e5, d5, um, I was very happy because now I get this move knight g4 with tempo. And the reason I get it with tempo is because the bishop on e3 needs to move because you don't really, you can't afford to give black that dark squared bishop. I don't, I don't think it's wise at least. And so after bishop d2, I get an f5 with tempo. And this is why I got excited because he played h3 and... Typically, that makes sense to attack the knight, but I was wondering if knight takes f2, check works, and now we're going to find out, because I'm going to turn on the engine. And I don't do this much engine watching normally, but I'm just so curious, because some of these games have really been, sort of peaked my tactical simmer. And it's a move. It's not a, it's not a good move. I should have gone back, but it is a move, and it doesn't lose. Um, so king takes f2. And wow, it's a very interesting move, a very interesting sacrifice. So I took on e, I played took on e4 right away, but evidently b5 is a really, really amazing tactical resource here. Um, sort of undermining this uh, white center a little bit further before you take on e4. So I took and then played queen h4, check king e3, queen f4. And I'm just wondering if there is an opportunity here uh, where maybe there was something that I could have done. And no, it looks like there wasn't. White is sort of just plus two, plus one and a half before this. So, yeah, so the sacrifice was not correct. But you gotta have some fun in Blitz. I mean, you just got to. You gotta, you gotta, you know, you gotta do something. And so, in honor of all these sort of semi aggressive efforts that aren't working out, I'm gonna play the last game in the similar vein. So, um,. Hopefully it'll be a different result this time, but this last game, this very last game, I'm going to play like a madman. And I know I say that a lot, you know, I say, oh, it's like, oh, you're going to play so sharp, and then you play a move like E3 or something. I'm really going to play like this win is the last, well, see, the thing is, if I said I'm going to play like this is the last game I'm ever going to play, um then I would play it really methodically and like War of Attrition type of style. That's my own style. But um, I'm going to play it like it's the last game of this stream, and I said I, I'm going to play aggressively. So that's what I'm going to do. And uh, we're just going to sit back and try it and hope for a good outcome. Uh, but, okay, so who is going to be that guy? All right, so an I am, M. Weston. All right, so... I'm going to play Guns Blazing, and what better way than against a French, and a winner, perfect, perfect vehicle for me to attack like a madman. Um, oh, this is so perfect. He's playing the Poison Pawn. Oh, we're going to get this sharp line. Oh, what am I supposed to do here? I forgot. Oh, 92. I think that's what I'm supposed to do. Yeah, 92 is this is the move here, and then after D takes... I believe you're supposed to play f4. Oh, this is so out of my league. I played this line once in a real game with white. Um, you can actually look that game up. It was against Richard Turm. Um, I believe now the queen is supposed to come back, so I'm going to go back queen d3. And d4 is this pawn sacrifice line. Um, very, very sharp. Very, very, very sharp. Um, don't know it very well. Maybe I should just ignore that idea of giving the pawn. All right, so d4 is this pawn sacrifice line. It is literally so theoretical, and I don't know it. That's the problem. You know, but I said I'm going to go for it. I'm going for the gauntlet. Bishop d7, okay. That's not, that doesn't worry me too much. And then bishop e3, okay. Um, and man, if I could just trade queens. <laughs> man, if you've heard that from me a million times before. 
But seriously, if I could trade queens, um, maybe it's not so bad for me. Or dangerous. So I'm going to go queen. Oh, my idea is to go queen c5. Try to trade the queens. My, my, uh, my queen is attacked, so I have to move it. And... Bishop c6 here, I expect, actually. Uh, in, the, in, in these lines, typically, black needs to keep the queens on the board because uh, white has this kingside maj pawn majority, four versus two on the king side, and white has three versus two on the queen side. But typically, black's counterplay in these lines is, is geared against a weak, um, a weak, uh, weak white king because the white king isn't really castling, usually. Queen c6 is very interesting. Um... I see the idea. The idea is to sort of get me to take on c6 so that it de he develops his, that I help him develop. Um, and because of that, and it also maybe threatens rook g2 in some lines. Very interesting move. I'm going to go rook g1. It protects the g2 pawn and maybe entertains threatening taking the queen on c6, but on my terms. That silence is me realizing he just played a really strong move. Queen e4 is super strong. Um, wow. I, it hits e3 and it hits c2, so I have to go king f2. And unfortunately now I, I just lose the c2 pawn to check, so I have to go bishop e2. And something went wrong here. Something went wrong here again. Um, the... the Again, this line of the poison pawn is so sharp, and I, um, I'm trying to play like a maniac, but it's just not what I'm good at. Um, I'm really not good at this type of chess, actually. So, because it's, it's the other thing about this, this line is so theory laden, so it's a very important that you just serve up, that you know exactly what you're doing here. Um, and, and usually till about move 20, um, usually some, sometimes even 30, honestly. And it's clear that M. Weston is, knows what he's doing here, so now he's just sort of. I mean, the, the material is equal. No, the black, again, white was a pawn up before. Um, the material is, material is equal now. And I think he's just sort of checking some, some things to make sure he has an idea of what he wants to do. But, B, but everything should be pretty good for him here. So b6 challenges my queen, so I'm going to move it. I think queen c4 is the only square I can move it to, actually. Jesus Christ. I'm making only moves. That's an awful sign. And yeah, and he's going to take on e3. Clever. And then queen d2 check. It's all log very logical. Very good moves. And um, I'm in. I'm lost. This is losing position. Because if I go to f2, he just goes rook c8. And if I go to f3, he's still going to go rook c8. Well, I'm going to go to f2. And then queen b4, but he can even go a5 now, kicking my queen away. He's going to go a5, yep. And I'm going to go queen takes e4, he's going to go queen takes a4 check, bishop f3, and then he has a million moves at his disposal to sort of really just expose my king, unfortunately. Um, and uh, it's not looking good. So I'll fight because you know, but he's probably gonna go. Okay, queen. I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna get a chance to fight a tiny bit. I think. Um, king g1 would have lost on the spot to queen takes f3. So king e3 is sort of what I have to do. Um, and yeah, he. I mean, he has so many decent moves at his disposal. Yeah, and he's picking. The good ones. And rookie 5 check is a big threat. Big, big threat. And yeah, I'm going to resign because if I, if I play... If I move my king somewhere, he just plays rook takes c1 and then c1 queen... And there isn't much I could do about that. So, um, this was a stream where I lost a whole lot.
but I hope you guys learned something um, from my losses. Uh, I certainly did. And um, again, I don't, I mean, this is not sort of my wheelhouse, the sharp stuff. My wheelhouse is the real positional stuff. But I got to give the people what they want. You know, sometimes the people want some sharp, sharp, sharp chess. And I hope uh, I gave you some of that. Um, and um, next time I will be getting back to my true self, my true colors, um, my, my slower, methodical, positional chess. So thanks for watching.